Walking hurriedly along the road, a cold and famished girl came to a manor. The manor's owner took her in, though the girl told him that she had no way to repay his kindness. The owner said that he was going on a long trip. He asked the girl to stay in the manor for a while and help him feed and care for the birds. The girl agreed. There were many bird cages of different sizes in the manor housing all kinds of birds, and a mysterious golden cage covered with black gauze. The manor's owner told her that it was a special bird and that it would not get hungry as long as it was kept in the dark. He said he would feed it himself upon returning and that the girl should never open the cage. The girl confirmed her duties. Alone in the manor, the girl fed the birds according to the owner's instructions. The day upon which the manor owner was expected to return arrived. The girl waited until the evening, yet the owner was nowhere to be seen. Outside, thunder and lightning suddenly appeared in the sky, accompanied by torrential rain. The girl closed the windows and went to check on the birds. The Manchurian crane was huddled in a corner, shivering. It must be afraid of the dark, the girl thought, and paid the bird no mind. The parrot, who had never uttered a word before, began shrieking, Awake! Awake! It must be afraid of the thunder, the girl thought, and paid the bird no mind. Finally, the girl's eyes fell upon the mysterious golden cage. Driven by curiosity and good-heartedness, Despite the manor owner's warning, the girl opened the golden cage, and the black gauze instantly fell to the ground. At that moment, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, illuminating the room and what resided in the cage. She saw a bird lying on a pile of white bones as it awakened and looked at her with eyes as red as flowing blood. Her entire body was gripped by inexplicable fear. It's hungry. A familiar voice came from behind her. These were the last words she heard before shutting her eyes for the last time.
There have been many famous artists in my family, each excelling in their own craft, be it painting, sculpture, or music. But this natural talent seems to have skipped my father's generation. He became a famous art dealer. When I went in there as a child, I remember that one of these exquisite works caught my attention. It was a white doll. And my father found it among the estate of a sculptor who had committed suicide not long ago. Oddly, it appeared almost new. I later left home to study, along with a girl my family had adopted. I asked my father if I could take the doll, but he gave it to the girl instead, simply because she exhibited some artistic talent. Well, maybe more than some. Later, the girl eloped with her lover and left the doll behind. The doll was finally mine, but it was now in tatters. One rainy night, my father received word that the girl had died. Her creativity seemed to have fallen through her fingers, and her income could not support her extravagant lifestyle of a great artist. Deep in debt, she died in poverty. I was so <laughs> sad that I cried and fell asleep with the doll in my arms. When I woke up the next morning, I found that the ragged doll was now as good as new. As if it had been given new life.